One of the ways in which biologists try and understand the diversity of life is by tracing phylogeny, that is, the evolutionary history of a species or group of species. A phylogenetic tree can be used to represent the history of these evolutionary relationships. For example, sharks, ray-finned fish, amphibians, primates, rodents, and reptiles all appear on the same limb of a phylogenetic tree because they share the common trait of a spine, that is, they're all vertebrates. Each branching in a phylogenetic tree is an example of a macroevolution in action. When a new characteristic appears, that is an evolutionary change. If that new trait is inherited, this may ultimately result in the evolution of one or more species. For example, developing a hair or fur-covered body was a macroevolutionary event. This character trait was passed on to felines, canines, rodents, and primates. However, the appearance of felines and canines on the same branch of a phylogenetic tree does not imply that one genus is more or less advanced than another. The evolutionary stage is equal and would be presented as such on a phylogenetic tree. When tracing phylogenies, biologists must gather as much information as possible about the morphology, genes, and biochemistry of relevant organisms. Only the features that result from common ancestry reflect evolutionary relationships and are used for building phylogenetic trees. Thus, the first step when creating a phylogenetic tree is to distinguish homologous from analogous structures. Homologous structures are similar in organisms as a result of inheritance from a common ancestor, an earlier organism that, through evolution, gave rise to new species that are related. For example, the forelimbs of a human, a bat, and a whale have evolved to meet the specific needs of the species, but they are homologous because the structures and forelimbs were found in a shared common ancestor. The same is true for body parts of insects, for example, antennae and mouth parts. A grasshopper chews its food, but a butterfly sucks pollen. Antennae may be used to touch, smell, and even hear. These structures are also homologous because they evolved from a common ancestor. An analogous structure is a structure in one organism that is similar in structure or function to a structure in another organism because of convergent evolution, not common ancestry. Convergent evolution is a process by which two species acquire similar features due to similar selection pressures, that is, similar environments, and not due to shared ancestry. For example, astrophyta live in North American deserts and are relatives of the cacti plants. Euphorbia are succulent plants that come from Africa and evolved independently from astrophyta. However, both share similar spherical shapes, have eight symmetrical sectors, and can take in and retain large amounts of water. They are from different evolutionary paths and have developed in different locations, but they look so much alike that people might think they're in the same plant genera. Another example of convergent evolution is the development of wings in birds and insects. Remember, convergent evolution produces physical structures that are analogous. They have similar functions, but do not have identical structures. A comparison between a bird's wing and an insect's wing shows that both wings enable the organisms to fly. The wings both flap back and forth from the torso, but the structure is different. Bird wings have bones that are homologous to the bones in human arms, while insect wings, such as those of a butterfly, have no bones. Once homologous and analogous structures have been determined, the next step is to infer phylogeny from the homologous structures. 